Every movie consists of a finite amount of single frames. Most movies play the back to at 24 frames a second, as I do right now. Over the years, technology evolved and we were able to capture more and more frames in just a single second, allowing us to capture more and more data, which allows us to manipulate time itself in the editing process. In most ways, it is always good to capture the most data we can to gain the ultimate freedom in post-production. But somehow it is different when it comes to frame rates, because not only do you lose light the more frames you capture, but motion blur also changes as the frame rate is directly linked to the shutter angle. So shooting 120 frames a second and playing it back at 24 frames a second looks very different and much less organic than if you would have just shot it at 24 frames a second to begin with. This technical limitation is holding me and many other filmmakers back from shooting a high frame rate more often and having the freedom to get more out of the moments we capture. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a tool that could eliminate these limitations and just allowed us to shoot at the highest frame rates possible, always, without even having to think about it, so we can just catch every moment with a sort of raw frame rate that we can still define in post. I have actually found some guys who for the past year have been working on a tool that could solve this exact problem. They call it Edison, a plugin for DaVinci Resolve that can emulate the look of different shutter angles. Sounds very promising, if not even game-changing, but does it really work? To test out whether this plugin can hold its promises, its three creators, Martin, Jan and Daniel, come to visit me here in Hamburg and together we're shooting a skateboard ad, all shot at 100 frames per second and a 360 degree shutter angle. Pretty unorthodox to me, but if that plugin works, the spec ad should look and feel as if it was shot at 25 frames a second to begin with. I am jumping back and forth between 24 and 25 frames per second here just for reference purposes. It is just a different format depending on what electric frequencies your country uses, but in video these frame rates are virtually the same. The day of the shoot had come. We had absolutely amazing weather conditions and the light was perfect. We started shooting at the skate park and already got some nice shots that will hopefully help us showcase what sort of magic Edison can do. And here we enter another interesting topic when it comes to frame rates in cinema. Because if you think about it, higher frame rates just offer more resolution. 60 frames per second are technically better than 24. Just as 4K is simply more resolution than Full HD. And yet, even modern 4K UHD HDR movies still use 24 frames a second. Someone once said that the human eye needs at least 46 frames a second for a smooth watching experience. That someone was Thomas Edison. But why is it that we still use 24 instead? We arrived at location number two. Here we didn't just get even cooler shots of our skater talents, but also use GoPros rigged to the board itself and an FPV drone. These cameras are known to automatically adjust shutter speed to compensate for exposure changes, which makes them look less cinematic. Using Edison, paired with some lens emulation like optical drift, should help selling the look of a bigger camera, like here, in The Hobbit. But wait, this looks weird, because The Hobbit was shot at 48 frames a second and was just a handful of Hollywood productions that tried to use high frame rates as a stylistic element. But like pretty much all other movies that tried this, this aspect of The Hobbit was not well received by the audience. But why? In the end, it all comes down to viewing habits. And The Hobbit did not follow the habit, just as the specific artifacts that an anamorphic lens would make the image more cinematic, the 24 fps format is an important element for an image most people would define as cinematic. If you're wondering what cinematic even means in the first place, Media Division just made a two hour movie about this topic. So if you want to skip film school, check it out. But when you look at The Hobbit, using 48 fps is not the only aspect that makes this look more like broadcasting than cinema. because. They also don't use anamorphic glass, for example, and the footage is graded pretty contrasty and saturated. All of this comes together to take away from the viewing habits of a cinematic image. But if these other elements fed more into this viewing habit, would it sell the high frame rate effect better? To capture the last few shots, we went to a car park and got absolutely lucky with the sun peeking out from the clouds. We also filmed at this bridge and wrapped the day with these shots and some very exhausted skaters. Now it is up to the edit if Edison can make all this footage look like it was shot at a lower shutter speed. To make the high frame rate look work better in a cinematic context, let's keep everything else feeding into the viewing habits. And maybe, to make this work better as a storytelling tool, we should build a contrast to the standard frame rate. 
What if we create a video with a variable frame rate that switches between 25 and 50 frames a second? Well, what do you think? Does it work? Now, let's watch back our skater footage and see if Edison can make it match a 25 FPS look. If you want to check out the full spec that we shot, check out the video link in the upper right corner or in the video description. Using this plugin was surprisingly simple. It was super straightforward to install and its settings are pretty self-explanatory. You just tell it what you shot your footage at and what you want it to look like. Something worth mentioning is that I did notice this plugin being pretty tough on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. So I just added it as a last instance after everything was already edited and graded. Altogether, I found it really fun diving into the aspect of frame rates as a creative storytelling tool. Just like playing with different gradings or aspect ratios, this seems to be a very effective and actually even more unique aspect to play around with. Especially jumping back and forth between 25 and 50 FPS, like I'm doing this video, is a really interesting way to utilize this tool in my opinion. Edison makes this process even easier as it allows you to shoot at the highest frame is available and capture everything you need to then use it as slow motion, high FPS or standard FPS clips. Also, a nice side effect when shooting 100 FPS at 360 degree shutter is that it allows you to get really crisp stills out of your footage as it limits the amount of motion blur on each frame. If you would like to try Edison yourself, check out the link in the video description. If not, for whatever reason, Check out how you can emulate vintage lenses and post right here.